Happy Monday morning, everybody. Welcome to reading. We're going to start our lesson three for our module for the Hope Chest. So come along with me as we begin. Okay, so you have a little bit of vocabulary. It's posted up on your Google Classroom. We're gonna work on story elements, which are settings, characters, plot, conflict, and resolution. Characters are the people in the story. Setting, where and when the story takes place. First person, if you remember our classroom, when you're looking straight ahead over near where the calendar is, I have first, second, and third person. Just a little bit of a reminder, the first person is a way a fictional story is written from the narrator's perspective. You'll hear words like I or me when we're reading a first person story. Third person is a way a fictional story is written using pronouns that you're talking about someone, he, she, it, they. Point of view, it's the way a fictional text is written either in a first, second, or third person. So let's review our learning targets for today. Oh, we're gonna read them. I can summarize chapter one of the Hope Chest using specific details from the text. I can explain the difference between first person and third person points of view. I can describe actions Violet takes in chapter one and what this says about the type of person that she is. So this is what you have got for your chapter one reader's guide. We were given background information about the Bolshevik revolution, about the flu that they keep talking about, the war that they keep referring to, which is World War I, Susan B. Anthony's 19th Amendment for the women's right to vote, and she makes mention of the League of Nations, which is the first organization that we tried to put together in order to create world peace. You also got text-dependent questions about the stolen letters. How did Violet feel about knitting squares for blankets for the French orphans? And why knitting the blanket squares helped Violet to understand how Chloe felt about being a public health nurse in New York. We spoke about these questions on our Zoom last week, so these answers should be reflective of some of the things that you would have written, that she felt she was doing something important, um, and that she realized that Chloe wanted to do something meaningful with her life, and that's why she went out and became a nurse. Okay, so let's think about the hope chest, and let's think about last night's homework. So you should have written down a statement in your reader's guide. Reviewing your summary notes, I'm just gonna pull you guys over here. Reviewing your summary notes and writing a summary statement helps you remember the main idea of the chapter. And when there's so many chapters in a story, it makes it hard to remember on its own. And that's why we use a summary statement. In today's lesson, we're gonna work on something called somebody in wanted, but so then. And you're going to be doing this for every chapter, so it's important that you really have a handle on how to do these things. Um, it's a strategy for summarizing, and you're going to have the opportunity to revise your first chapter one if you feel that you didn't do it as effectively the first time. So how did Violet feel about knitting squares for the French orphans? She felt that she's doing something important that involved the whole world. On page 10, there was evidence to support this claim. And it says, to Violet, knitting those squares seem like the most important thing she's ever done in her life. So why did knitting the blanket squares help Violet understand how Chloe felt about being a nurse? She realized that Chloe wanted to do something meaningful with her life, something that makes her feel just a little different than the others, just like Violet felt when she created the blanket squares for the orphans. I also found evidence for this on page nine and 10. It says, Violet, listening on the stairs, had known just what Chloe meant. So let's think about this. You're gonna need a green colored pencil. It could really be any color, but going forward in my lessons, I chose green. So every time you see that green pencil, just make sure you're still using whatever color you choose. Trust me, go with green, it makes it easier. When you wanna make revisions, to something you've done, you're gonna revise with the green pencil. You're using the pencil because then you're able to see your marks in regular pencil 
and the green marks are what we've done to add additional support or additional understanding after we've worked together on the lesson. So if you need to pause this right now to go run and grab a green pencil or any other colored pencil that you have close to you, go ahead and do that now. Wee, where's my green pencil? Okay, so let's get started on this somebody in wanted but so then. You summarize informational texts in the past by finding the main idea and we would chunk that information and then we'd write a summary statement. We've also learned ways to think about details in complex texts like when we were reading Eagle Song. When you put into words the things we do in class, they sound like big and crazy and confusing. Don't worry, lots of scary words come out of my mouth, but you're all able to do it when it's time to work. So I don't want you to get too scared that I'm talking about main idea and chunks of text and, and complex literacy and don't worry. It's okay, you've done all this stuff already. I'm just talking about how you did. I'm gonna post the somebody in wanted but so then anchor chart in the material section for the writing so that you can refer back to it. It's gonna look like this. You had this for your homework. You had a summary statement for your homework. So this list of words is one way for the reader to think about the main parts of the story. It may not fit every chapter exactly, but it's helpful to think about when you're summarizing literacy texts, especially people who get confused and can't remember where something happened. Stopping after each chapter and making a summary is gonna help you really solidify that understanding. Okay, so let's review the reader's guide for that first chapter that we worked on. So this is the anchor chart that I'm going to post on the Google Classroom. So if you are having a hard time on how to fill in the somebody in wanted but so then, you can refer back to this. The somebody, you're choosing a character that you read about in that chapter. In is the place where the text is set, the setting. Wanted, what did the character want? What were they hoping for? But. What's the problem? The obstacle that might get in the way of the character getting what they wanted up above. So is the outcome of the problem or the resolution. Then is what happens to move the story forward, okay? So you've made summary notes about the chapter and your notes are probably similar to mine. So you can go ahead as we go forward and revise those notes based on what I'm saying but make sure any changes that you're making to your own homework or your own paper after the lesson is all being done in a green pencil. Ooh, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay, so a summary statement takes the notes and writes them in sentences that make sense. So an example of our summary notes, if we were doing it on Violet, the somebody would be Violet, in would be Pennsylvania in 1908. What did she want? She wanted to see her sister Chloe who'd run away from home. But her parents kept Chloe's letters to Violet a secret, so she had no idea that Chloe even tried to contact her. So Violet stole a few letters after she found them. Then Violet became very angry with her parents for lying to her. You're somebody in wanted but so then should look something like this. So Violet lived with her parents in Pennsylvania in 1918. She wanted to see her older sister, Chloe, who had run away from home because she didn't want to marry a man her parents wanted for her. Violet didn't understand why Chloe hadn't tried to contact her. But then she discovered that her parents had hidden letters Chloe had written about her and became very angry with her parents for lying to her. So notes are just a way to organize your details and keep literary text to help summarize it. Sometimes small details need to be added to a summary statement to help them make sense. Think about when we write an essay and we do our planning page. We take our notes on our planning page and then we add a few sentences or words into those ideas to make an essay. So these are the small details that sometimes you have to add into your summary 
so that when somebody reads it, it makes sense. And there goes my wiggling pencil. Oh, there's lovely little Miss Karis. Reread your summary statements. And if you feel that they need to be edited or added to, to match very similar to my summary statement here, then you can go ahead and make those changes, but make sure you're making them in a green colored pencil so you could tell the difference between your writing and what you're adding after our discussion. So take three to five minutes, pause the video, and if you want to add in anything to your summary, add it in now, but use that green pencil. Okay. You will be expected to summarize each chapter of the hope chest just like this. Taking notes, using that somebody in wanted but so then strategy, and then you're writing a statement. You're doing this for every chapter, so I really want you to be very comfortable with this. We're going to have a lot of practice. Okay, now let's reread Chloe's letters to Violet. You're going to go back to YouTube, open up to page six and seven. It's highlighted in the chapter, and you're going to read the first paragraph after the letter on page seven. You're going to think, we don't have a pair or a share to share with, but we could share on Zoom tonight. So right now you're just doing the thinking portion. How are those two passages different? Think about it for a second. Now we're going to share our thinking. So we found that character Violet and her parents and a setting of Pennsylvania of 1918. We also found events that Violet found letters from her sister and that her parents had hidden from her and she became very angry with them. Violet's sister Chloe ran away so she didn't have to marry a man that she didn't love. So be careful. Some of you might be identifying Chloe as a character right now. Chloe is not a character yet. But why, Mrs. Karras, we've met her. We haven't really met her. She's only been talked about. Chloe spoke about her. We've read letters from her. Uh, we know her parents spoke about her, but Chloe has never been introduced. We have not heard words from Chloe's mouth. Knowing that a character will eventually be entering the story as a main character gives a reader something to look forward to as the plot develops. That's what's so exciting about books. They give you little bits and little bits and the story builds and builds and builds and builds. I really hope you're all reading independently at home too. I, me personally, I've got like three books on my Libby right now that I'm bouncing back and forth in the, you know, like half hour I have to myself before bed. So let the story build. We haven't met Chloe yet. Something to think about as they look for Chloe is when will she be like Violet describes her or will she be more like her parents describe her? Because think of somebody you know that you think is just, you know, fantastic. The cat's meow. Oh, they're so cool. They're so great. And then your friend goes, oh, really? I, I, I don't feel that way about her at all. She's totally different. People have very different perspectives. So I could describe something as wonderful, whereas somebody could describe something as not so wonderful. So let's see what kind of person Chloe ends up being. Is she more like Violet imagines her or remembers her to be, or is she more like her parents describe her? As you read the text, you'll be introduced to a number of key characters that have important roles in the storyline. I'm not there reading with you. You can't throw your hand up real fast and be like, I don't remember who so-and-so is. So it's important that we're gonna have to keep track of these characters and look for the ways that they change throughout the story. Because you have to remember, just like people, characters change as well, and how they interact with other characters inside the book. So our first character that we're gonna nail down is Violet. You're gonna create this anchor chart for Violet inside your module notebook. And if you could see down here on the screen under my face, I have my module notebook ready to go. So we're gonna think about Violet and what actions she's taken that affects others. So you're gonna have this anchor chart that looks kind of like this. You're gonna have a character Violet, then you're gonna have actions that affect others, and what does this stay, say about this character? So you're not getting sticky notes, unfortunately, because we're not together, but you are going to go back and you're gonna reread on page three, starting with 
They're addressed to me, Violet said, and ending on page four where she slams the door and ran all the way to the banks of the Susquehanna River. You're looking for information. You're asking these questions. What did she do? How did it affect others? What does this say about her, meaning Violet? So take five to 10 minutes, reread the section and answer the questions. Pause the video now, go back and try to fill in the chart about Violet. Okay, welcome back. We're gonna talk about an action Violet took, an action Violet took and how it affected others. She stood up to her parents, right? She made quilt squares for French orphans. These are two actions that Violet took. And now we're gonna use that little bit of information to fill in our graphic organizer because we're looking for actions that affected others that we found about Violet. So now we're looking for what you think what kind of person Violet is. Maybe you think she is a strong-willed girl. Maybe you think she's compassionate and she wants to help others. The excerpt starting on page nine with the letter started, uh, let me see here. With that letter started stupid tears in Violet's eyes and ending on page 10 with, or at least much more of the world than she had ever seen. Think about these questions as you write your responses. What did she do? How did it affect others? What does this say about her? Take five to 10 minutes to reread and answer these questions. Pause the video now. Okay, welcome back. Now you're gonna use these answers to fill in the second section of Violet's anchor chart. So now that we asked our questions, we have a filled in anchor chart that looks like this. You're gonna pause this video and make sure that you're putting this inside your module notebook. Pause the video now, copy it down inside your notebook so you have it so that we can discuss it at Zoom. Okay. So readers often have to infer about why characters do and say things based on how other characters react to them. Whoa, that was a mouthful. Characters often change as stories move forward because characters are people, they change. You'll be keeping track of actions that Violet takes throughout the novel as well as how she changes. So you had something like this for homework for chapter one. You should have filled in your summary notes and story based on Violet. And again, if you are working on this and changing it after our lesson, you're changing it in your green pencil so that you can see the difference between your understanding and the clarification you got after the lesson. So we have Violet in Pennsylvania in 1918 who wanted to see her sister Chloe who had run away from school but her parents kept Chloe's letters to Violet a secret. She had no idea Chloe had tried to contact her. So Violet stole a few letters she had found and Violet became angry with her parents for lying to her. Then we took all of these notes, added a few little words in here and there to make it sound clear and we created our summary. Violet lived with her parents in Pennsylvania in 1918. She wanted to see her older sister, Chloe, who had run away from home because she didn't want to marry a man her parents wanted for her. Violet didn't understand why Chloe hadn't tried to contact her. But then she discovered that her parents had hidden letters Chloe had written her, and she became very angry with her parents for lying to her. Okay. Whoa. Homework. What you're gonna do tonight is you're gonna read chapter two, which if you don't have the book is okay. My read aloud is on YouTube for you. Books should be coming in today. I'm gonna call the school. And as soon as I know when they're in, you're gonna know when they're in. Then you're, you're going to record your summary notes on the left-hand side of your reader's guide 
for the Hope Chest Chapter 2. And you're going to reread as you take notes. So let's preview what's for homework tonight. You're going to get your background information for Chapter 2. Little bit of information about the cars in the 1900s. They needed to be started with cranks. So before cars had batteries, they had a crank. Without an electric starter, the only way to turn over or turn on an engine is to get it started where to push it or to roll it off a hill to engage the clutch. They overpassed that by cranking it. The crank was in the front of the car and they would have to put their hand on it and spin it like this in order to get the car to start. Can you imagine going outside and having to spin your car like this to try to get it to start? Uh, over on YouTube, there was some really cool, if you Google uh, search um, 1900s cars or 1900s car start crank, something of that like combination, I found a whole bunch of videos that was really cool so you could see what they were doing. Tuberculosis, they're going to talk about it in the book. Uh, they might refer to it as TB also. It's a disease. It's a bacteria in your lungs. It's very, very contagious and it could kill you if it's not treated by a doctor. Now we have modern medicine and it's not a big deal, but back then it was. Uh, every year before you come to school, you have to get a TB test. It's that little test that they put right here under your skin and it blows up that little bubble and and you have to wait a couple of days and you circle it and you let the doctor go back and see if it's gone down, that's a tuberculosis test. Also, I wanna clarify some beliefs about women. Many people believed that women, their only job was to stay home, take care of their husband and raise their children. And while now we have that option to do that and women want to do that, back then, that's what was expected and you couldn't do anything else as a woman. So if you had any dreams of like going out and having a job or, or making a difference in the world, it wasn't happening. Here's your homework for tonight. Your somebody so wanted but so then and your summary. Here is your glossary of words you might come across that are difficult. And here is your figurative language, idioms and adages. You also have your glossary for chapter two. So head on over to Google Classroom, get the material, type in your information and submit it to me and I will see you tonight on Zoom. Our new Zoom time is 2.30. I'll see you at 2.30. Bye guys.